There, I'm not claiming there's innovation in the tools. I mean, everybody's doing it. The purpose is different. Additionally, we're looking at this review process, and that is where it's, it's messy. The review process has not changed for the last 50 years. We did the literature review. Nothing has changed. Today, there are some initiatives talking about different ways of doing peer review, uh, but a lot of the people will not like it because they don't have the supposedly double-blind, double stringent uh, approach, rigorous approach, whatever that means. But, so the idea is that, let me show you now in the article that has been completed. So this article that has been completed, I, um, this is the kind of feedback you will get. Because in the system, the associate editor identifies how many reviewers that want to see it. And then uh, the associate editor also gets to review the exact same way as the uh, reviewers. And you get, in this case, the article was rejected. The associate editor's comments, okay, in this here. And you have here every section, the feedback, what we're promoting is that you, the, the reviewers make comments on every section on three very simple variables. Those are not uh, now uh, written in stone, carved in stone. We can always change them once we uh, finalize it, but not more than three. Every section has to be adequate to the journal. It has to be clear, and it has to flow nicely. I think if we meet those criteria per section, because you evaluate it per section, and then you evaluate the whole thing. And then what you get is you get the averages from the reviewers. You get three reviewers, four reviewers. You actually get metrics. You actually get results and their comments in here, all centralized in the same place. The system will do analysis, too, that if one reviewer says it's fantastic, it's the best thing after the end of the world, after the beginning of the world, and, the, and, it's, <laughs> and another one says it's the worst thing that ever happened, well, the system, you'll have a flag, and it'll tell you there's no convergence in terms of what it is, so there has to be something else done to it. We cannot take these kind of decisions. I've had them before, and then I say, what do I do? Then whatever the associate editor uh, makes as a decision, uh, he is damned if he goes this way, damned if he doesn't, goes the other way. And then you have the overall comments, and you have votes. The system also has in it a lot of other features where you could, you could open it for anonymous feedback from the specialized community. So because here it's per topic, and seven of us are in this, let's say, knowledge management topic, and we say, okay, let the knowledge management group tell me what they think. They have these kind of metrics up and down from the community. It's anonymous, but it's also another way you get feedback. So all these things are switching on and off depending on how we want to manage all this. So the analysis and the review process is different. Now, once, once you go into here, look at here. It's been rejected. Now, do I need, when it was rejected, the associate editor says, can you revise it by that date? So I can submit back and say, I have no intention to revise this article, or I have intentions to revise it. If I have intentions to revise it and I submit it, then it opens up that space and I continue working on the original. I don't have to worry, do I have the last version? Do I don't have the last version? Did I miss anything? Did I not miss open new revision? And it's tracked. It has the copy of the first version. It has the copy of the second one. And if us as, as associate editors, we want to see the differences, how many, how many of associate editors actually look at the two articles and say, okay, this is the difference. Okay. So either case, this is what you do. You end up having that space again, and, the and it tells you that it's revision one. And if you go to revision two, revision three, whatever it is, you have all this logged. It's traceable. You see exactly the evolution of the article, and, and uh, basically that is what it's all about. It's a, the whole thing has been analyzed in terms of process and task analysis. Um, and from the uh, people who are submitting articles, from the reviewers, if you're a reviewer, from the associate editors, and from the chief editors' uh, perspectives. I use this uh, system because this system came from, from another system I started, which is only focused on research collaboration, not publishing. 
And that research collaboration part is, is filled now with uh, um, uh, researchers, and I'm using it with my students. And it's an amazing place to keep track. I, I eliminate all the concept of uh, emails, forget about emails anymore management, and uh, centralized place to share resources with my students. And uh, traceability by date, by categories, but everything is in the same place. And yes, this communication feedback is all there. Uh, just to show you about the whole idea also, again, is that it's going to be software independent. We don't have to worry which format you send, which format you don't send. We already built in a PDF reader, which then you can, thinking about mobile applications, so you can actually read the articles and everything using uh, iPad, whatever it is that you have. And it's, it's, uh, uh, it's just a reader of the text. So you can't copy and paste. Nobody can copy and paste from your articles. They would have to screen capture everything and stuff like that. This is this is uh, this is this is look at the revision one that you're working on. You're getting on here your uh, scores, your comments on the site to manage the editorial process for your own article. Here is a full list of all the features. So when you're copying and pasting from Word, paste from Word because Word, when you're copying from Word to a text uh, message here, it copies with it code. So in order to do that, um, you need to use that feature. We can add other features for it as well if we haven't thought about it. You can embed in it actually videos if you create a video, a simulation, an animation. So when it's read in PDF or other technologies, we can actually run that videos as well. Um, images, they could be used as an attachment so you can have a link in here to it, to an image that's external or you can embed it inside. So here if you look at, for example, the article text, Okay, this is how the text look. If you go to, let me see, for a table, this is all copy and paste from, uh, from uh, uh, Word. Now, I found another thing that's easier and simpler. A lot of journals request you to do that too. I just, uh, from my Word document or from whatever software, I save the image as uh, JPEG or I just sna uh, snip it using with Windows 7, the, the whatever it's called, snippet, is it called snippet? Um, I just take a JPEG image and I embed it in the, in the uh, like in here, for example. Maybe it's in here, no. So anyways, I mean, this is um, like this one. So I, I just uh, save it as JPEG and I include it in here. It's clear cut. You don't have to worry about the things moving and shuffling around as you edit it. You're inviting, is the idea is to collaborate with other authors. Now, if you let somebody to go in, please take a look, that person could copy everything and publish it the next day, unless you, you trust them totally. You understand? It's a collaborative space environment. So the idea is to share resources. He, he finds, like, now in, in one research group, I say, I'm going to look articles related to this. You look for articles related to critical thinking. Me, related to technology, and we have a psychologist related to psychology and clickers, and everyone brings it, finds them, and then we have now a consistent article set. And that's, that's, the, that's, what we're, that's the idea.